Hi guys, what's up? This is Screen Guard Guy. Welcome to another Dota commentary. Today's game is going to be a high-level pub from 2009, as well as Nada. And with me today is a very special guest from Dota commentaries. It's Doc. Hey guys, what's up, man? I know I haven't been casting for a while, but I'm coming back and and definitely happy to be here. So this is 2009 versus Nada. Who is um Nada on their team? Just a, just a check. Uh, Nada, I can't really remember at this point. I think he was playing. Hayabusa was playing the Zeus. Uh, not sure who the Nada was. He's the, he's the, he's uh he, he was the other. He's not pink, blue, uh, green or brown. We'll figure it out. Let's let's just go straight into the game. So he's the gray guy. Yeah, the gray guy. The guy with the, the like no name. Okay. Okay, ready? Alright, cool. So you wanna do the countdown? Okay. Gonna unpause in three, two, one. Okay, now uh, the thing about this it is a pub game and so we will be seeing some random picks, which means a few un more unusual plays, uh, as well as some uh, extra gold actually for their heroes for the players who do random and the ones that repick of course gonna see a little bit less gold. You wanna try and you wanna try and introduce as many players as we can? Uh, uh well so far we have a tiny, uh, I think that's on yellow, CM, uh, CM is being picked by purple, called Su Su Su. Uh, Pugna, you can't see his name because he has a Chinese name, that's played by Tio, and First Sai is playing the Rubik. Yeah. And uh, we haven't seen what Star Knight has picked so far. On the other team, we have Xiaobi playing the Kanka. Actually, I'm pretty sure these guys are going to make some swaps, so I'm not going to say which player is playing which. They have Abera, they have Lucifer, Clinks, and Zeus. So they got a bit of everything, quite honestly. They got like a good solo mid. Oh, Bera just got repicked. Why? Why would you repick Bera? Bera is like one of the most gayest heroes there is in a pub game. So easy to pick people off and shit. But whatever. Uh, the what hero was picked? Oh, turn into an Urshaker. So we're going to see some tryhard supporting going on by 1 2 3 here. Uh, Kanka is going to be played by Gualia, it seems. Uh, Hayabusa, you said, is, yeah, the Zeus. Xiaobi is going to play, be playing the Lucifer. And Clint's going to be played by the. I, I would say that's Nada then, right? Yep. Would oh. that be Nada or. Uh, okay. Yeah, it is Nada uh, on Lake Clinks, right? Uh, just a quick note, I think, did we say in 2009 we'll be playing Lissage? His name doesn't appear all over his hero. And he's gonna go for a very, very, uh, standard build. Three GG branches as well as an Ancient Tango of Uh, just one salve and a clarity. And as the game starts, we're gonna be seeing Axe gonna be going towards the mid lane. Probably gonna be going toward jungle, but, uh, has not picked up a stout shield or just a bunch of regen, which I guess is fine for Mogul Khan in the early on with that culling blade. Uh, we're gonna see Crystal Maiden just try and scout out the rune, and, but unfortunately not gonna get it. Earthshaker gonna get it first. We're gonna be seeing uh, Lucifer gonna be going straight into the jungle, if I'm not mistaken. And Zeus will be going mid. Who do you think's gonna win in this uh, Zeus Rubik lineup? I mean, both have really good uh, grass spells. Yeah, you're right. They do both have really good spell spells, and quite honestly, I'm surprised that neither of them has decided to get a ma fast magic stick in this case. Against the Zeus, he's definitely wanted because, you know. You get like a free 15 HP, 15 whatever uh, charge every single time he lays down a chain lightning. So that's really nice. Uh, but yeah, Rubik definitely has a bit of a better attack animation, and his nuke does a little bit more compared to Zeus. So Zeus comes in at a later time. Usually for Zeus, they'll want to level their lightning bolt by at level three, four, and five. So by then, the lightning bolts will start hurting. But before that, it's not going to happen. As we see on bottom, Clay's had a little bit of a engagement with the rely and, and massage. It's obviously, the Clint's had to run. The Clint's going to have a somewhat of an easy lane in this case. They even warded using the two wards to block out uh, the two caps, but they already spawned, so he went there a little bit late. But regardless, uh, he should be okay in, in terms of uh, farming this, this uh, bottom lane here. Yep, yep. Uh, I think we're going to be seeing... No, I, I'm sorry, I thought Axe was going to be coming in to, tr to tr try and do some ganks, but of course, no detection yet up on any of the heroes on the Sentinel side, which means... Uh, Clink should not have that bad a time of farming. I mean, he does deal uh, quite a bit of damage. Crystal Maiden does come out to harass. We'll have to be with that Nova. Uh, a lot of spells, which, of course, Crystal Maiden can kind of spam since her Brilliance Aura does come into play. But Clink's with that Windwalk, should be just fine. 
Uh, I'm actually really, really super interested in the mid lane because it appears that uh, Lord of Olympus is actually slightly outleveling the Rubik. And uh, once he gets that bottle, it's only going to get so much easier. Hello? Yeah, oh, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting to see that Zeus is actually CSing very well. Uh, yeah, like he, he's just looking at it right now. He's not missing any opportunity to CS at Rubik. Honestly, is a little bit thrown off its game right now. Clinks going to the jungle here is going to try to chase down the Axe. Quite a bit of damage. I think Axe should be okay in this case. But that's where the Sentry Wars are coming in, into play. Where the two Sentry or not the Sentry Wars, excuse me. Uh, the Observer Wars definitely saw the Axe and Axe was a little bit low. And look at that. Axe already used both his regeneratives. And oh, look at the Chaos Knight. He's still on level 2, so he's he's really not that great right now. As we see, Chaos Knight having a gem already goes on the Clays. Clays is going to get go down immediately, so that was really easy. But, but wow, really bold move on Tilt the Nine to get that gem right off the bat. And that's also going to be denying both of the Observer Wards as well. Yep, and as Chris Smith and Pink's the cap up there. Yep, at the same time, there was a bit of a go made on Queen of Pain, managing to pick her off with a nice torrent as well as Fisher combo. So it's going to be like a one-for-one one trade from both sides. Kills going off by the Force. First Blood did yep. go towards the Sentinel. Uh, that Gem of True Sight proving to be a nice investment. You don't usually see people get it this early. Uh, so, so very nice play from 2009. It's really making that worth it. Yeah, and who do you think right now? is going to be able to come up on top like the farm on top for the Kanka or the kind of uh, farm coming from 12th and 9 because 12th and 9 definitely did spend like 700 gold on the gems so he's going to be a little bit behind in terms of farm his free farm at least but he do you think uh, he'll be able to catch up well he's this? he's gonna be getting free farm right now clinks has just moved to the top lane recognizing you know i can't do anything in that lane at bottom uh Kunka's gonna have to share that exp uh, gonna lower his, just gonna uh, prevent his uh, stat growth just a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, Nasaj more than making up for a 2009 very capable player, and Nasaj I think has the better late game just overall than Kunkka. He certainly does hit harder. Those phantasms are absolutely uh, beautiful to watch, and uh, it, it really does depend. He should be having the farm now, and he should hit level six first. Uh, whether or not he makes he can make do with it is a completely different story. As I see that, I just checked that he's level four, and in fact, Kunkka is very, very close to his level six. So, just disregard everything I just said. In the meantime, mid lane, it looks like there's going to be a go mate on the Rubik. Oh, there's a the Fisher. Is there going to be a chain lightning? Oh, so very, very low. Unfortunately, not revealed. Is there going to be another long range Fisher? No. Rubik's just going to get out of there. Axe, of course, is going to be sitting around. Actually, Axe. X is the one I'm very, very surprised and has not been, uh, he's only level 3, has not been participating in the laning phase at all. It looks like Doombringer is going to be going down to a nice reality rift as well combo and it looks like Chaos Knight, is he actually going to go down for that? Going to take so much damage, going to salve up nicely, just going to save his life right there. Yeah, you saw how many hits that Nasaj took here. At early game, already 5 armor, that's so much armor. for a, It's almost as Imba as Dragonite. Uh, once he gets his dragon, a few points in the dragon blood. And yeah, Doomringer really can't do much here. But someone has to take the bottom lane to get some of the C, uh, CS and experience, right? Yeah. So Doomringer's going to have to kind of just uh, bite this one down or whatever, however you want to say it. Um, as for top, Kunkka resorting to pulling a little bit so Clayton gets some farm himself. Uh, but he is definitely a little bit behind. Doesn't does not even have a soaring five minutes in. Well, pretty much six minutes now. Um, looking back at mid, Rubik decided to send the Zeus back back home. Zeus doesn't really have much. Yeah, he doesn't really have that much uh, mana or, <clears throat> or regeneratives at the moment. He's gonna most likely go for his mana boots next. We don't know how much gold he has. Wait, can I check that? Actually, I can't. Yeah, he's at eight hundred gold. Right now, so. going to be an X marks a spot plus a torrent as well as a boat. Oh, and the Fisher combo is just going to hit, but there was a stolen Fisher going to be going backwards and the telekinetic throw. Is there going to be a one more hit, really? Just one more hit at this point. Earthshaker's waiting, and yes, they are going to get a kill on Rubik. Uh, sorry about that. Just <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem, no problem. I was missing that, and I was kind of unfortunate that the, the Tidebringer came up the second before he killed the uh. uh 
kill the Rubik. Because if if the Tyringer was up when he hit the Rubik, the chicken would have, would have also died there. I was just looking at that little mini pledge. It was walking back, and that cleave would have just totally destroyed it. It would have been awesome. As we see, Doom Reader goes out once again at bottom. Uh, Zeus coming in to do a uh, two lightning combo. And CM goes down, but 209 is still standing strong right now. Uh, he might need to go heal soon, though. Yep, and definitely with this uh, Earthshaker as well as Kunkka coming into the lane, not going to be having the free farm he once had, and which is crucial because he's only managed to pick up uh, barely a, sort of the components for a power tread. Uh, that gem really did set him far behind. Uh, in the meantime, Axe is going to be going for a Hood of Defiance. Not sure how I feel about this. I mean, there's a lot of spell damage on the uh, Scourge side. Whether or not an early pipe is actually the best item for an axe remains to be seen, though. Uh, particularly once you have Nelf down. It looks like there will be a go coming in on him. There's a pincer movement. There's the ball to start, as well as a fissure. Very nicely done. Going to be some bo body blocking. He's going to roar just for the armor. A few more right clicks. Battle Hunger is going to go off an Earthshaker. Bolt will finish off that axe. Uh, Earthshaker looking solo. Should not go down, actually, to that uh, Battle Hunger. Uh, and it looks like Chaos Knight now is in a bit of trouble. Just going to be pushed back slightly. Uh, this engage, I think, probably over. There's a Fisher. It's going to be another stun. No. Okay, and that is the end of that engage. Let's just currently check the score a little bit. It's uh, three to four in favor of the Sentinel. Uh, you mean really three to four? I'm sorry, in favor of Scourge. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Because just the way you said it, it's like three to four, and then Sentinel. It makes sense, but it would not. I would not say it's in favor of them in any way. No, 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 no. <laughs> but no. anyways. Yeah. So looks like um, Zeus and and uh, Urshik, Urshik can share in the bottom, no problem. Uh, they might be making a push bottom. Somebody just TP'd out. That was that was a Rubik that just TP'd out. Probably sensing a gank coming up. So his instincts were definitely right there. And Doom going down once again to the. Oh, that was a tr uh, three man. Yeah, it was three, three man, man gank. gank. Very very perfect chain stunning set. there. Uh, we had like a one second stun, but immediately followed up with a bite. Uh, as well as a stolen torrent, it was it was quite funny actually to watch. Uh, yeah. Come up, you, you see how um the Lucifer just yelled Coco, yeah, because uh, he's blaming the Kunkka for it, giving him torrent, pretty much uh -huh. in that case. Oh yeah, that's the fun. It makes sense. That's the fun name for Proudmore. I I've completely forgotten. And we see Earthshaker's only picked up boots by this point, level six. And is there going to be a go made on that Doombringer? I mean, they've invested four heroes up top. They definitely either want the tower or at least want to kill. It looks like Clinks is moving in and out. Are they going to get this? Gem of True Sight is going to scout him out. There's a Fade Ball. Is there going to be? There's a four-second stun. They're going to get that Clinks. No problem with the Screen of Pain. But here comes the ball. Here comes the reinforcement. Is there any more coming off? There's Queen of Pain. Going to be taking so much damage, but she's going to. Yep, go down there. Here comes the bolt, and Crystal Maiden is going to sacrifice her life just to try and hold them off. It looks like um, Chaos Knight's also died. X marks the spot on that Rubik. Definitely going to drop the gem. He's picked it up, and here comes the bolt. He's going to fall at least to earn. Level Death will pick him off. Going to give three kills. I think three for one on that exchange. Yeah, um, that was because they basically wasted everything. I mean, everything on that clicks. It would have been nice if they managed to get away, but they were a little bit out of position in that case, and the torrent definitely slowed them down as well. And plus, the bolt movement speed definitely helped uh, Scourge in terms of chasing as well. So uh, that's why they managed to pick everyone off afterwards. Everything was on cooldown from the Sentinel team, and they just kind of went down one by one. And Dooming the Chaos Knight was a really good call by the Doombringer because the Doom plus uh, plus the Zeus's ult uh, brought down the Chaos Knight just. Just buy it up, pretty much. And once he goes down, everyone else kind of just falls like flies because they're not as tanky as the Chaos Knight would be. Yeah, I just want to check the farm actually on 2009. Only saying about 195 gold. All he's picked up is that magic stick and that power tread's not where you want uh, your Nasage to be at the 10, about 11 minute mark. Uh, certainly, if you want to compare him to the Kunkka, I'm fairly sure Kunkka. Hang on, let me just check out the Kunkka. I think I saw. Django components on him. I mean, you at least want a, a bracer on your. Yeah, we see, we're seeing an urn, we're seeing a bracer, we're seeing boots, we're seeing smoke of deceit. So he's not going to be going like the full carry route. Uh, probably going to be saving the huge DPS items for that Clinks, uh, who is just absolutely a beast to deal with in the late game. Yeah, right now the Clinks is just going to be farming up. They're going to let Clinks be the hard card carry, if you want to call it that. While Kanka kind of just walks around, actually, right now you can't even see him on this map because he just smoked up somewhere. Where is he? 
Easy Bottom lane, we're going to be seeing a boat as well as a fisher. Chaos Knight's oh, going to go down to that combo. Insane amount of kills. And Axe is going to come in, but really, really late at this point. All four of the Sentinel heroes are sitting there. They want to defend this tower. Not sure if they can. Axe is going to run in. A little bit out of position. Here comes a Nova as well as a Bolt. Battle Hunger is going to go off. There goes a Sonic Wave. Not going to get a kill, but Fisher managed to pick off uh, that Axe. And Scream of Pain is going to go. There's an ultimate in from the Earthshaker. A long-range Fisher. Uh, I think that's the end of that engage. Once again, three, four, I think nothing in, at this point. And here it goes. Doombring actually wants to come in for more. Nope, just standing by. Are they going to take this tower? There's teleports. Yeah, in there's still quite a bit of number of people on the Sentinel team that's still at the tower right now. There's three people. They're going to go on the Kanga right away. Four seconds done going on the Kanga. Kanga should be going down immediately. Doom coming in, dive of the tower. Uh, not really doing much damage. Just throws one nuke down. They're going to keep on chasing our axe coming in as well with the battle hunger. Uh, trying to get that four seconds done off again. There we go. Zeus gets hit by it and Zeus goes down immediately. Now Tori hits two of the nine. Two of the nine. It's about to go down. Not before. Doom goes down first. One more hit. Tonka does get the massage down and now Earthshaker is going to be in trouble. Uh, still getting chased but I think uh, Axe should be okay. Axe is like uh, went down to the Urn of Shadows and then Rely needs to run back now because Zeus is going to be zapping. One more hit. Yep. Rely goes down. Rubik should be okay. So that was a very hectic team fight. It was kind of a back and forth. Scourge dying, and then they came back and pretty much won them won them the battle there. Let's just check the score at the end of the day. In the meantime, that was only a 4v5, I think. So, because Klinks was at up top the whole time pushing the tower. He's going to get that some early gold for his team. Uh, we're going to be seeing the scores now 8 to 13. So, a 5 kill advantage for the Scourge. That is a tough hill to climb up of. Uh, but if we think about it, uh, Sentinel still does have technically the better late game, so if they can turtle well, uh, Rubik definitely a hero that can turtle, and we're going to see an immediate go on the Queen of Pain, going to get chain stun right there, two seconds stun going to be going off on the Kunkka, Call's going to go, there it is, they're going to get, there's a Urn of Shadows actually going to go down, and it looks like Kunkka's so very, very low, is he going to, he's actually going to die to battle hunger, but in the meantime, there's a huge amount of chaos coming in in the beginning. In the middle, two heroes trapped in between two fissures. Zeus is just going to manage to out-DPS the Chaos Knight. Doombringer looking solo is going to finally fall. Crystal Maiden is going to pick that one up. And we're going to be seeing a chase going to be going on for the Earthshaker. But he's going to land a beautiful fissure to stop those two. And should be getting out of there just fine. So the Sentinel uh, showing, showing uh, it's not going to be easy to take those towers. And we're going to be seeing scores still. Yeah, it was, that was a 3-4-3 three, three there. Yeah. So... It's not bad for Sentinel to be able to defend. Well, not for not for bad for Scourge either. But Sentinel don't really want to be the ones kind of just uh, surviving with two supports remaining in the field. That's never a good thing. Chaos Knight is the one that's always dying first nowadays. That's definitely not a good thing. Uh, two of the nine definitely needs some time to farm, and Scourge is doing a really good job of not giving him that. Yep. Like right now, uh, every single time, wherever Nasaj shows up in a lane, you will see like the, in the next two minutes, a group of hero just shows up at that lane and then it ganks him. You, I think that's that's a good thing because they realize the line is their strongest um, and their carry for the Sentinel team. Yep. And it's yeah. See, there, there, three heroes coming in right there. And I don't think Atel Knight is going to be able to see this. There's no wars in that lane, and there's the torrent. There's the X. Wait, there's where's the torrent? Uh, okay, missing the fail. Oh, that was an epic fail boat, but that's okay. Nasaj goes down regardless. And they should be able to make turn this into a tower as well. And meanwhile, Urshaker getting ganked by uh, Rubik. Rubik kind of trapped between two fissures here, so uh, Urshaker should be okay. Yep, uh, I think it's also very important to note that uh, the Sentinel are not able to shut down this Klinks. Klinks already level 10. He's going to be working on an Orchid Malevolence, if I'm not mistaken. At the moment, I, I believe he's definitely, yes, he's one of the highest heroes, highest level heroes so far in the middle in the game. I'm seeing Doombringer going to be roaming, I think, to the middle. Are they hoping to get a kill? Axe looking so very, very low. Has not really done anything this game. Uh, been very much AFK. Uh, although he did get, manage to get a, a kill, I believe, in one of the last team fights. He's going to be going for a certain fight. Should pick it up very, very soon. Uh, in the meantime, Rubik going to be picking up Invis Rune, hitting level 10 finally. Uh, and we're going to be seeing smoke up from these three heroes. Going to be going for a very, very dangerous gank, I guess, if they can find anybody. Yeah, I guess um, they're going to try to expect someone to go bottom and TP there uh, and farm. So that's why they're going to be camping there, hoping the, the moment they see someone show up in that lane, they'll go and gank him. But right now, they haven't seen anyone. And Rubik is Invis, so they're not going to be able to see him. Uh, 
they haven't run into each other yet. And yeah, right now Sentinel has more things to worry about. They need to farm up first before trying to say gank the clicks. They have oh, absolutely no resources right now. And looking at bottom right now, uh, Kasha is gonna get ganked. Three TPs coming in, but it, it's so slow. Uh, these two heroes coming in, and oh, there's a boat coming in, but misses both. I think one of them actually canceled a TP there. I think. I think that's what happened. As Rubik is gonna go down for one more hit, where is it? Is there gonna be an ulti? No, nope, he's gonna die to the uh, Urn of Shadows. Or, nope, a zap. And the Saj is gonna try to solo the Kanga. Kanga gets a four second stun. It is going to go. No! Not gonna go down. And CM coming in very, very late gets a Frost Nova kill on the Kanga, but she is most likely gonna be screwed, anyways. And yep, two old men in the jungle gonna destroy that poor Crystal Maiden. Uh, Crystal Maiden rushing in really only for that kill came in very very late, unable to contribute. But at least she did manage to get the kill. And Crystal Maiden, I think, for your Kunkka, not a bad trade, not a bad trade at all. Yeah, but regardless, though, she should not have been there so late. Yeah. And we saw some pings right after that death, like in most pub games, to happen, where you die or you, your half your team gets wiped along with you and then you're just pinging the person who's not there it's like what the fuck is he doing why is he not there things like that and we saw that on the axe axe still afk farming did not tp in onto bottom and that's why they lost that team fight because it was a 4v4 and well, man, you remember what happened last time when it was 4v5 right yeah check out the level on this axe he's only level 8 very very far behind uh that's what happens if you don't participate in ganks if you just try an afk farm in a jungle uh, you're not going to be going so far ahead. I mean, if you farm in lane, it's completely different. We're going to see an Oblivion staff already picked up on the clinks. He's going to be jumping out of that woods very soon. And already, uh, he, he's already quite a menace if he's uh, if he's present. And we're going to be seeing an immediate go. Is there going to be a torrent to follow up? The X marks a spot as well as the boat a little bit late. But here comes a torrent. Fade Ball's going to go off. There's a call. There's an Earthshaker Echo Slam as well as a few more stuns. But of course, torrent is just going to... Uh, the stolen torrent is just so big at this point. Clinks is coming in, so much damage, one more hit really. Zeus is gonna come, he blinked forward, he's bought a blink, he's gonna bolt and kill that axe. In the meantime, here comes Doombringer, looking for some kills. Is he gonna get it? Axe marks your spot, there's a Wrath, gonna bring off everybody here. Come on, Crystal Maiden, gonna be going down, a few more right clicks. Clink's doing so much work, one more right click's gonna do it. Long range Fisher, not really necessary. They're gonna turn this into at least a, a tower, and looks like is gonna be going for a Django. I don't know why I said that, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, surprised to see that um, there's already a Django on the Doombringer, so I don't know why the Kanka oh. kind of went there. Maybe a little bit of a miscommunication. No, Chinese or teams, maybe people just... From what I've heard, Chinese teams love multiple Django's. Uh, it's actually a strategy uh, that's not really uncommon in the European scene or the uh, or the Filipino scene. Um, basically, the, that Django, like, once you do use up that charges, you, you really want another four charges. And just having somebody else buy it instead of rebuying it, sometimes they say it might maybe it's better. Uh, certainly, it helps in the pushing, and it's a great early game item. Like if you think about it, having the extra five percent uh, is just so good for pushing in the early on. We're gonna be seeing a solo kill actually go went off on 2009 at the bottom. Clinks doing so much dirty work. Uh, that's what happens if you really leave him to his own devices. He becomes an absolute menace to deal with. Yeah, quite honestly, uh, Clinks was in a really uh, really good position. He was hitting. He was hiding behind uh, the trees, and Kunk or uh, not Kunk, uh, Nasaj went down in like four hits. So Chelna was not even able to respond to that um, fast enough. Yeah, we're gonna be seeing a torrent gonna be going off on the Rubik. X marks the spot's gonna follow it up. Is there gonna be some big damage, big plays? There's gonna be a boat. Here comes the Doombringer walking around looking Fail for boat. Taker, looking for Fisher. <laughs> Scorched Earth is gonna get stolen. It's gonna be a level death. Don't wanna even look at that. Here comes the here's, the fight's at the middle of the lane. Here comes the TP. Trying to TP out from the from the axe. He's actually gonna get canceled and he will be going down at this point. Oh man, and here comes a telekinetic throw. At least they're gonna get the Kunkka. At least they're gonna get the Kunkka. X marks the spot. Here comes 2009. He's gonna phantasm and he's gonna run back immediately. Fisher's gonna stop him. Here's a sonic wave. They're gonna get the earth shaker. Here's a fade ball. Sentinel defending that very nicely, uh, considering how they were ganked upon. And it looks like Doom went off on the Saj. He, no, he's gonna get out just fine. And the meanwhile, the chase is still on ish. Uh, Queen of Pain just gonna try and push that. Here's a dust. Are they gonna actually get this clinks? There's no, not fast enough. Clinks really just running like a demon at this point. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I think if Sentinel is going to try to gank the Clinks, they they need more resources than that. Like right now, they're on the always on the defensive. They were they were fighting at the second tower when the first tower was still up. That's that's how much, uh, like, that's how how balls deep the, the 
the uh, scourge was going. As we see now, Zeus going to try to chase the Akasha here. Akasha trying to get some jukes off. Rupe coming in here with the stolen fissure, and there should be a telekinesis coming in here. Zeus is pretty much screwed in this case. Trying to do some last minute hits. Rupe goes down immediately. There's an X on him on her right before she went down, and the Taurus should be able to get her get her down as well. So oh, uh, no. I guess on Zeus for two heroes, not bad, not bad of a trade. Now, what do you think of that blink on Zeus? I mean, it really helps with the chasing. We saw the way he can move after Queen of Pain. Uh, at the same time, not really the item you want to get. And it looks like Axe is going to go down, I think. Is there going to be a level death or a Doom going to be going on him? Doombringer's chasing, and he's so fast with that Scorched Earth. Level death's going to bring him off. In the meantime, there's a bit of an engage here on Chaos Knight. Two heroes going to be going down. That's really all that uh, Klinks does need is a reliable stun. And he can just start pushing you down, especially now that he's finished his Orchid. This is looking to be a completely one-sided game. Yeah, I mean, how many heroes have Blake daggers on their team right now on Scourge? The Doombringer has a Blake. He's gonna, he's pretty much using it as a, uh, it's like a centaur basically. He, uh, I'm pretty sure he has the centaur's uh, endurance roar right now, so that's, he's just gonna go in and make a stomp, so that's, that's a not bad of a strategy. And there's Zeus, obviously, gonna be, always stay in the same position to get lightning bolts with that Blake dagger. And uh, Earthshaker, obviously, it's a whole new hero once he gets that building dagger, as everyone knows. Uh, yeah, so they have like all the mobility that he needs, and then the click to just pretty much move like a moving tower. Right now, someone just got X'd, and there's a tour very well timed by this Kanka. And Kasha coming in, or yeah, Kasha's gonna get killed by the Earthshaker, and then there's really absolutely nothing that 2009 can do in this case. Uh, every, uh, yeah, three heroes already went down. They can transition just into a push. Someone's gonna should be taking the farm at top though, but I guess they don't really need it. There's just so ahead right now. The clanks is pretty much like, yeah, I don't need any more farm. We're gonna end this, and that's exactly what they're gonna do. Man, look at the attack speed. Doom on the did a fail right there. <laughs> Not even any uh, attack speed items. He's able to like. I think I'm pretty sure that's close to maximum attack speed. Just so naturally fast. Uh, move speed incredibly fast, and his damage output is insane, particularly if you consider those flaming arrows. Uh, very, very difficult to see how they can bring him down. They really gotta focus, and they gotta use those stain stuns. As I say, that looks like Kunkka's in a bit of trouble. Gonna get X. Here comes a Doombringer. Gonna stop Chaos Knight looking in so much danger. Gonna go down. They even popped a Django. Don't think it was completely necessary. Now there's a level death on Crystal Maiden. She's gonna be looking so low. Here comes her Bolt. She's actually not gonna go down, but Crystal, but Queen of Pain gonna get silenced, and she's gonna get, gonna go straight down right there. And here comes a Fissure. Here comes a level death once again. Gonna pick off that axe. Man, this is just doom so much mobility that there's really nothing the, the Sentinel can do to be not out of position. Oh man, this is insane. So if okay, I'm just gonna ask, if you were Sentinel, what what do you think you would do at this point? I, I would AFK in the fountain pretty much. <laughs> if you if the, if you wanted my honest answer. I would pretty much AFK in the fountain. If I mean it, you know, it's 2009, or these players are actually somewhat decent, so they're going to try to play to the very end, but this just looks completely depressing. And I, I feel bad for them, because the Axe has really not been participating. He didn't even finish his hood. Okay, that's how bad it is. And, oh, seems like the game has pretty much finished. Everyone has, is leaving. Oh, man. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, if, you're, if your teammates aren't really doing that well, and your, your primary carry is getting completely shut down by the other team, there really isn't an option for you but to turtle, and in this lineup, you're not really a turtling hero, or you're not really a turtle lineup. The only carry you have is a massage, and the other team has a Klinks, who obviously does more damage late game, and there's also a Kanka, who's level 15 at the moment, so yeah, it, it's, it's really, the odds are really, really against you. Some good success. And not to mention the score, the score is 15 to 38 right now. So more than right? double. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, we we got some good uh, some good some good ideas how to play these heroes now. I think sort of. I mean, the heroes we saw on the scourge side aren't really the ones you you see usually nowadays in professional games. You see stuff like Zeus, like Lucifer. These are not heroes that like Zeus especially does not tend to stick uh, towards the late game. He does need to be active as a ganker, and we did manage to see him. I think he participated in almost every team fight. He was laying down those lightning bolts the second they came off cooldown. Just bringing everybody's health insanely down. Uh, Lucifer, of course, throwing out level death whenever he could. Scorched Earth, being a very, very active participant, not really 
Like, you notice there were no really big items. We're not talking... Ma we're not... Like, maybe the Orchid, I think, was the biggest item in the entire game. There was no Butterflies. There was no, like, Heavens, Halberds, S and Ys. We're just looking at Jangos. We're looking at Phase Boots. Uh, for most of the game, Heroes didn't even complete the boots. And they managed to do so successfully in that first 20 minutes that, you know, you can win the game uh, it, just very, very easily, I think. Yeah. Um... I was kind of surprised to see the Zeus going for the phase boots instead of mana, the traditional mana boots because uh, you definitely want to have a bit more regen. But in this case, the Zeus was doing fairly fine by him on his own with uh, which just a phase boost. I mean, he's level 15, so he has a shitload of stats. And look at that, he's already at 1300 HP and and like 900 um 900 mana. So that's a fairly good mana pool. And he didn't even bother getting a bottle or no wait no, he, he did get a bottle um, he had a bottle and then he donated it to Earthshaker so that was a really like a really generous <laughs> gesture and that's why the Earthshaker was able to move around and farm a little bit or just gank non-stop because he had all, all the region that he needed he had mana boost he had a magic stick and he had that bottle of his so he definitely got his dagger fast and once he got his dagger they pretty much can keep on pushing because the Sentinel team they were so shut down that they have absolutely nothing. The Akasha also was not really playing a major role in this game either, because every single time the Kanka just does really, really well timed X torrents, that Akasha is pretty much rendered useless. Like his blink, what are you gonna do if he gets Xed? Do you blink first or are you gonna try to blink after you get torrented? Right? Yeah. It doesn't matter. You you you'll die before uh bef after that torrent hits anyways. Yeah. So. Kunkka. That's most likely why. Yeah, actually, not a bad counter to the Queen of Pain. I mean, we don't normally see Queen of Pains caught out of position because even if they're really far forward, they can always blink to the side or blink out. Uh, the fact that, you know, you have that X marks a spot just completely, you know, shat all over his skills. Uh, blink became completely useless as an escape mechanism, and particularly when everybody else started getting Blink Zeus, the chain stuns just kept coming in. They did not need a lot of spells to focus him down. Like, towards the end, if you want to bring down Kunkka, you got to pour your Reality Rift, your Phantasm Illusions, you got to pour absolutely everything, every telekinetic throw, every Fade Ball, just to bring down one hero. In the meantime, what do you need to bring down? Um... Chaos Knight, you just needed a Fisher and a few right clicks from the Clinks. What do you need to bring down the Queen of Pain? You just need maybe that Torrent and then plus maybe another stun from the Earthshaker. That's enough. They're very, very frail heroes. Uh, just completely out of position and just a good job by the Scourge. Imagine picking them off one by one, not trying to take into a big team fight. Yeah, that that Gong definitely would play really well. You saw in there was one time where he was failing with his tour or failing with the boat but the fact that he actually tries to time his x into a boat instead of a torrent sometimes is i think that is just brilliant because i think most people like you and me when we play play kaka you time a torrent with an x and i think um, that will be good enough but he actually tries to time it with the boat at this at the same time so i think that's like that's like the next level play right there yeah uh, and definitely, I mean, even if it doesn't hit, if you can get it through, like, at least two or three heroes, it's already worth it as in, as in itself. I mean, just for the rest of that team fight. The reason why Kunkka does last so long is because he is dashed, like, dousing that uh, Captain Coco's ROM. Which, uh, the minus 50% damage, which is actually not something to be underestimated. It is significant amount of damage reduction. Yeah, and also, well, it defeats the purpose of people trying to hit back, but... If they do manage to kind of break through that fifty percent and the after the effect, then people will start will start yeah. uh, feeling that damage, right? So, it's it's definitely a very very offensive spell, and if if they if the offense doesn't really work, then they're kind of be, they're, they'll be in trouble. Yeah, that's the thing. In this case, they, they were time. like going all offense. Yeah. yeah, they were like just going all offense. The Sentinel had nothing to prepare for, and the Blink Daggers. In the end, were like even more offensive, right? It's like they're gonna keep, they're gonna chase people back, and they're gonna keep on, they're gonna keep blink on them, and they keep on chasing them back and picking them off one by one. It, it was, it was pretty nice yeah. to see some, uh, like, like this is almost like CM level, professional level, uh, CM tryhard mode, uh, whatever you want to call it, from the kind scourge. of, uh, kind of, yeah, kind of team play from Scourge. I would like to see the birth room though. That would have been nice. This is a birth shaker. I want like Mask of Madness, Lincoln Sphere, just some like you know massive single man ganks. That would have been some pretty awesome stuff. Yeah, Barathron would have been all over the map in that case. But I guess they didn't really need that. They were all over the map anyways as as a team, so they don't need a Barathron to make it that hard. But um, yeah, I think we definitely uh, 
uh, talked for quite a bit after this game. Uh, you have any last words? Uh, no, just uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching. Thanks to you, Doc, uh, for casting with me. It was a ton of fun. Uh, if you guys, I'll, I'll put your channel link in the description box below, but I'm pretty sure that more people are going to watch this for you than they do for me. <laughs> so you're probably going to give me a few yeah. subscribers at this point. Okay. Well, uh, I will do the same to you when you appear on my channel. Um, yeah, quite honestly, this game was more of a practice game for us because this is pretty much our first replay, uh, first dual cast together. And uh, Screen Guard Guy, his internet is a little bit sketchy at the moment. <laughs> but I was surprised that this game, I there wasn't too many uh, like blackouts or anything like that, voice, black, voice blackouts. Because uh, uh, it was kind of fading out when we were just chatting uh, there. His TeamSpeak doesn't work right now, so that's why you never see him on TeamSpeak, but then again, nobody goes on TeamSpeak right now. But whatever. That's not the case. That's not the point. Um, yeah, so hopefully uh, his internet will be a bit better afterwards. Yeah. Donate him some money After so he can get better internet. I'm going to go strangle my like IS my internet service provider so that I will get it. I'm just, I'm seriously, I'm going to call them up because this is not the first time. This is, this is annoying. Anyway, yeah. Thank you very much. 0.04 megabytes of upload speed. And I have to put up, <laughs> yesterday I put up a 90 minute game. Okay, so like all you people on the internet, you guys should be grateful, man. Grateful. 90 minute games. How long did that take you? Oh my god, I, I did not use this internet. If I used this internet, I tried it, like I just put it up experimentally. It said 20,000 minutes. And I was like, nah, nah, forget it. I'm going to go somewhere else. And 20,000 <laughs> minutes. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a year, right? That's like. Okay, anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, the Screen Guard Guy and Doc. Uh, we'll see you guys again next time. All right, good night, guys.